I'm Diana, and welcome to another doll repaint video. Oh, hey there! <laughs> I hope you're doing well today, and I don't know about you, but in my corner of the world, lately it has been raining basically non-stop. I really don't mind though because I'm one of those people who loves thunderstorms and curling up with a good book on a rainy day. Today's doll was inspired by all the rainy April weather and the saying, April showers bring May flowers. Although I do realize I'm posting this doll in May so I kind of missed the April window. Oops! But hey, I started making her in April, darn it! Well, anyway, Today, I want to make a storm cloud themed doll together. And today's doll is actually going to represent a dark and brooding April storm cloud whose tears are raining down all throughout the month. And that's what's going to bring the May flowers. I'm really excited to get started on April the storm cloud with you. But before we can do that, I have to ask you a huge favor, and that's to go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Subscribing and liking this video is the easiest and best way for my art to be shared on YouTube and that is literally my dream. So support this little artist, subscribe to my channel, it's free and it also makes you a super awesome person. Alright, enough talking, let's get started. For today's dark and stormy doll makeover, I'm using this secondhand Gulia Yelps Monster High doll. I chose her for our storm cloud for a couple of reasons. First, she has gray skin, which is a great jumping off point for her repaint. And second, the bangs on this doll are similar to the bangs that I want to give her new hairstyle, so I'll be able to have a nice pre-existing guide using her old hair plugs. And my third reason is there's just something about her face shape that makes me think that it will translate easily into a brooding expression. Not totally sure why, but I'm going with it. So let's start with her prep. Before I can start with her makeover, I have to cut her hair down as short as possible. While I cut her hair down, I'm also heating up some water to soak her head in. The hot water makes her head soft, which allows me to remove her head so I can pull out her old hair plugs out of her neck hole. And speaking of which, I'm now using my forcep tool to remove the old hair. This removal was a little bit harder than usual because her hair was somewhat dry and brittle. This made it harder to pull out and usually the plugs are kind of gummy from the old glue and they kind of ooze out. Not the case on this one. Now, using pure acetone nail polish remover, I'm taking off her old makeup and scalp paint so I can have a blank canvas for her makeover. Now that the prep work is over, I'm going to start with her body's repaint. Before filming, I gave her body three coats of Mr. Super Clear sealant and let it dry completely. Mr. Super Clear is essential to doll repainting because it gives the plastic a paper-like texture that you can apply pigment on. Just be sure to wear a respirator while you spray in a well-ventilated area because this stuff is toxic. This concludes my TED Talk. And now I'm working light to dark and gray toned soft pastels to create shadows on her body. Her body shading is going to be a lot different than what I usually do because I want it to look dark and stormy to go with that storm cloud aesthetic. I still want her to have an element of blushing, so I'm applying this pink soft pastel color, which still goes well with the cloud theme. 
Once I'm done, I will seal it again with Mr. Super Clear Sealant so that the pastels won't smudge or rub off, and it will also tone down the vibrancy of the pink blushing so that it isn't overwhelming. To start on her outfit, I'm going to work a little backwards today. Instead of starting on her cloud dress, I'm going to start with her boots. This is mainly to avoid the risk of me she-hulking and crushing her dress if I put the boots on second. Remember guys, she-hulking, not even once. So to start the shoes, I'm doing a little bit of sewing on the upper portion of the boot. I'm going to sew the seams closed, but leave the bottom portion of the boot open. Off camera, I turned the boots out and pulled them up on her legs. Now to attach the upper portion of the boot to the sole of the boot. I had these cardboard soles from a previously failed shoe project, and luckily they are perfect for her shoes. Using the excess fabric on the bottom of the boot, I can attach the boot by wrapping the fabric to the bottom of the sole and gluing it in place. Next, I'm making the top of the boot out of painted elastic. This will make the boot look more finished and it will keep it from slipping downwards. Now we need to make the heel. Using a wooden dowel stick, I'm going to cut it down to size and paint it to match the boot. I gave each heel an angled cut at the ends so they can be applied flush to the shoe. Using super glue, I'm attaching them, and once it's dry, I will paint the heel completely and do some final touch-ups to the boot. So now that we have April's shoes, we need to start turning her into a cloud. Starting with a mannequin doll, I'm first going to wrap it in plastic cling wrap. The cling wrap will protect the doll from any glue residue from this painter's tape, which I'm using to mask a cast of her body, which will be the base for the clouds. I'm going to keep wrapping until I get to the length that I want, and then cut up the back for easy dress removal. I want to give the dress three coats of fluff before I start making the actual clouds. To do that, I'm making flocking out of old hair weft fluff, then applying glue to the base of the dress and pressing the fluff into the glue and then letting it dry. I'll do this process two more times to make sure I have a thoroughly coated base with no tape showing through. I learned this process while filming my last video when I had to figure out how to make fuzz for rabbit ears. After letting all three coats dry, our dress is looking properly fluffy, and I moved it onto our actual doll. Now it's time to attach these little yarn fluff balls that I made. My goal here is to apply them in a way that looks cloud-like, but still complements her figure. I've watched enough drag race to know that a cinched waist is key here. As I apply the fluff, I'll keep squeezing her waistline to maintain that shape, and once I'm done, I will let it dry completely. Fluff. 
Now I want to transform her look from fluffy dress into a stormy cloud. Looking at references, I noticed that a lot of storm clouds are a dark gray at the bottom and lighten up to white at the top. I want to do the same thing for this dress, so using soft pastels, I'm going to start defining fluffy cloud parts of the dress. I'm going to start the application with my lightest gray and work my way up to my darkest gray color with a touch of blacks. Once I'm done, I'll cover her legs and apply Mr. Super Clear sealant to the dress to keep the pastels from smudging off. The majority of her body is done, so now we can focus on the funnest part, her face up. For the pigments, I'll be following the same basic color rules that I used on her body, but they'll be slightly more punched up. I think she needs to have more sky colors for her face, so I'm starting off with blue undertones and touches of purples. Now I'm coming in with my watercolor pencils to block in her eye shape. Since she's a storm cloud, I decided that I want her to be crying. So I want to do my best to draw an expression to match, which includes shading to give her a furrowed brow. I've drawn in more eye details, but now I'm switching over to my acrylic paints to get sharper details. She has hooded eyelids, and her eyes are kind of set back farther into her skull, so it's a little harder for me to see these fine details in this small space, so I'm using a magnifying glass to help me out. <laughs> Now that I've added the dark line details, I'm going to add the white line details. And in the middle of that, I decided to try to darken the area above her cupid's bow, but I temporarily gave her a mustache. Back to the white details, I'm now adding highlights to her lid creases, and we'll blend them out later with pencils. Speaking of pencils, I'm now coming in and shading her scleras to make them look more 3D, and I'm finally giving her eyes some last touch details with my acrylic paints.
part of her catch slides, I'm adding white to the bottoms of her eyes to make it look like there are tears welling up. Out of her eyes, I'm now painting two over-the-top sized tears with one rolling down her cheek. And since she's crying, I'm going to give her some runny mascara. To make it look runny, I just took a wet paintbrush and pulled some pigment down from her eyeliner. On top of her tears, I'm putting these little drops of leftover resin to give her thick and juicy teardrops. When I'm done with the face up, I'll apply gloss on her eyes and tears to make them really shiny. And now to give her sad girl eyebrows. I block them in with watercolor pencil and now I will go over them in a couple different layers of acrylic paint to give them detail. Onto her lips, I'm giving her a simple dark blue ombre look to balance out her dark eyebrows. Moving on to her hairstyle, I want to give her something that's very similar to a 1920s flapper girl look. So to do that, I'm going to give her bangs with a very short tapered A-line bob. This is going to be a very ambitious look for me, so off camera I mapped out where I want to apply the wefts. I'll be working with yarn wefts again, and I have to tell you, I've totally converted to yarn wefts now. They are amazing and so easy to use. Like on her cloud dress, I'll be working in multiple shades of gray and white. Again, starting with the darkest color on the bottom and working up to the white tone. This style has a few important elements I have to work around. The first is that I want the back to be cropped close to the back of her skull. The first two rows here are dedicated to the shortest cropped hair in the back. I've applied the weft as usual, but now I'm going to cut it down to size and, using my scissors, thin and blend it out so that it isn't just a blunt line. Right now, she kind of looks like a fryer, but she'll be a sweet little flapper soon enough. 
The next element to tackle are the bangs, or fringe if you live in the UK. I forgot to get a shot showing the pre-existing part lines the hair plugs left behind, but I'm following along with that while I place the wefts. I've cut the bangs above the eyebrows, but they're looking a little blunt. To soften and shape them, I'm going to use my good friend, Mr. Snippy. I tried a couple of other scissors for this, but he works the best for this style. Element number three is tapering the rest of her hair into an A-line bob. Using a ruler, I'm doing my best to cut each side in a similar angle and in the same length. I will have to do this for each row while being mindful of blending the colors on the sides and cropping in the back. One benefit of starting with a darker color, it makes it easier to see the first layer so I can cut it similarly. Now that we're getting closer to the top and final element of the hairstyle, I'm starting to mix up the colors a bit and eventually the hair will transition to white. The last element before styling is the part. I'm giving her a center part line, and I'm going to use the same folded method I used on Ruby, my red rabbit doll. Once that's in, I'll fill in the missing row with white wefts. Both sides of the part are in, and she's looking a little Andy Warhol-ish, so I need to tame and blend the layers using Mr. Snippy and my hair blending scissors. Snip, 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 snip. I'm feeling really good about the blending, but I want to tame the poof of her hair. To make her hair lay flatter, I'm wetting it down with a paintbrush and then applying cling wrap, which will smooth it down as it dries. have one last accessory to make for April, and it will involve giving this mini umbrella a Victorian makeover. Off camera, I sculpted the top of her umbrella into a peak using epoxy sculpt, and inserted the pointy end of a dowel stick to mimic the curvy design that was popular in Victorian times. Once the epoxy sculpt has dried for about 24 hours, I'm going to give the inside and outside a coat of black acrylic paint. Now to give the umbrella a little touch of sparkle. Taking this clear fishing line, I'm attaching pieces of holographic nail glitter to the line to make it look like sparkling rain. I'll then attach it to the umbrella to make it look like the rain is running down it. And here's our finished umbrella! And now I want to attach it to her hand. I'm using super glue to do this, and 
Someone recently asked me how I don't get glue all over my fingers when I use super glue, and the answer is editing. I usually get some on my fingers, but luckily for me, I have a lot of acetone on hand, and that helps get it off. Let's start to reassemble her body, starting with her arms. As you can see, I painted her forearms and hands to look like elbow-length black gloves, which looks very breakfast at Tiffany's chic. Before I add the umbrella hand, I want to reattach her head. After her hair dried, I decided to make her hair flippy on the sides, and hopefully I won't smush her new hairstyle when I reattach her head. Not too much squishing, so now I can attach her umbrella. The rain lines are poking into her, so I'm going to do some snipping and straightening using my mini hair iron. Here is our completed look for April, and I really feel like she embodies a brooding little storm cloud. I think her cloud dress turned out better than I could hope for. And as always, I want to hear from you guys about what you think of April. You guys are always so helpful with your insights and comments, and I love reading them, and it helps me level up my skills. Also, let me know in the comments if you have any spring-themed ideas that I can make as like a little sister for her. I think that would be really, really cute, and you guys are always so inspiring. All right, I gotta go get this super glue off my fingers, but I'll see you next time with another doll makeover video. Bye!